This is the last part of the lecture for chapters 21 and 22. So this is part five. And in section 22.3, um, the summary really comes down to the four types of data that document the pattern of evolution. So you need to know these, that it consists of direct observations, homology, the fossil record, and biogeography. So we'll define each of these. But please keep in mind that natural selection does not create new traits. It only edits or selects for traits that are already present in the population. So first, we'll look at, oops, let's go back here, yes. First, we'll look at homology. So homology is the similarity in characteristic traits from a common ancestor. So for example, we have the four limbs of hu a human, a cat, a whale, and a bat that all share the same skeletal elements. So even though the current appendages in each of these different species have very different functions, the four limbs are homologous structures because they represent variations on an ancestral tetrapod forelimb. So they all, you can see here with the color coding, the red and the blue shows you the homologous structures that are all from the same ancestor. Um, and they all share a common um, characteristic or trait. They all are these two bones. The vestigial organs is defined as structures that have marginal, if any, importance to the living organism, so the current um, organism that's living today, um, has structures that really have very little use. Um, but they had an important use in the ancestors of that organism. So for example, the skeletons of some snakes and of fossil whales have vestiges of a pelvis and leg bones of their walking ancestors. Another is the, this um, flap within the eye. Um, so within humans, we have this little flap within our eyes that used to be another eyelid. And you can see in other species, like a cat, um, that they still have that eyelid that will cover up um, and it's a clear eyelid that can be seen through. So an organism that maybe is moving at high speeds um, needs to protect their eye from things that would fly into it, but still be able to see if they're pursuing prey. But in humans, that's no longer a useful thing. We still just have a remnant of it. It's a vestigial organ. In homology, um, Comparative embryology ha reveals anatomical homologies that are not visible in the adult organism. So an example of that is that all vertebrate embryos have a post-anal um, tail and a pharyngeal arch. So evolutionary trees are hypotheses about the relationships among different groups. Homologies form a nested pattern in the evolutionary tree. So there's something that's common between different organisms that are branching off from a similar or common ancestor. And we use anatomical data or DNA sequencing data in order to construct these evolutionary trees. And we're going to study this a little bit later in our another chapter in this unit. But this shows you a beginning of a phylogenetic tree here where we have a branching off point um, where we have different structures. And in here is a homologous characteristic that is shared between the two branches. And here, here's another homologous characteristic that's shared between the different branches. So this becomes a branching off point as well. Conver
convergent evolution is defined as the evolution of a similar or analogous feature in distantly related groups. So an analogous trait is one that arises when groups are independently adapting to a similar environment and they have favored adaptations that are very similar. So they don't have a common ancestor, but they are still in environments that favor a specific adaptation. So they develop that adaptation that's passed into further next generations in both groups, even though they are developing separately. That's called convergent evolution. And that's, again, an analogous as opposed to homologous structure. So an example of that are the sugar gliders, which are a type of um, mammal that's found um, in Australia, and the flying squirrels that are found in North America. They both um, have had to adapt to environments of living high up in trees, and so being able to glide or fly um, is an adaptation that's beneficial to both of these species even though they do not share a common ancestor, they share this analogous characteristic. The fossil record shows a lot of evidence of the extinction of species and the origin of new groups and changes within groups over time. So in this case, what you're looking at are ankle bones, um, which show a relationship between most mammals and cetaceans, um, and even toed ungulates. You can see they all share this double um, peaked um, formation in the bone. You can see that in all of this. It's this hoof pattern. This is a sh picture showing that fossils can document important transitions. So what this one's showing is a transition from land to sea and the ancestors of cetaceans. Um, the final source of data is biogeography. And biogeography is the scientific study of the geographic distribution of a species. And this is also used to provide evidence of evolution. So the theory of Pangaea is that the Earth's continents were formerly united in a single large continent. But since that time, these continents separated by continental drift. And by understanding this continental movement, um, we can see a relationship to the movement of these continents and the modern distribution of species, to allows, which allows us to predict when and where a different group um, has evolved based on its relationship geographically. Um, some of the definitions when we're looking at biogeography include an endemic species, which is a species that's not found anywhere else in the world. So that was endemic. So islands have many endemic species that are often closely related to species on the nearest mainland or an island nearby. And Darwin explained that species from the mainland must have colonized the islands and give, gave rise to new species as they adapted to the new environments. So again, in summary, there are four types of data that document and support Darwin's view of evolution. We have the direct observations, we have homology, we have the fossil record, and we have biogeography. And all of these go together and Dob Dobzhansky is known um, for as a famous geneticist from Columbia University, um, sums us up by saying nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution.